Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be giving you some historical romance recommendations. Baby, baby. Now I'm very surprised actually that I've never done one of these videos before. <laughs> I actually read a lot of historical romance. Some people might not know this, I do. I love historical romances, but I've yet to make a specific recommendation video for historical romances. Historical romances are in certain trope videos that I make. There's always maybe at least one in each trope video that I make, but I haven't made a dedicated historical romance recommendation video yet and I don't know why, so let's let's do it <laughs> first i have a viking romance for you we have the viking chiefs marriage alliance by lucy morris so this is my favorite viking romance i have read a few viking romances and none of them have been good like i've never given any of them above three stars except for this one this was an, a solid four star from me um this is about our heroine who was married to a evil cruel older than her very older than her jarl she is a widow now and his sons are wanting to marry her like his sons from his first marriage and she's like no no no, i'm not gonna have that i'm never gonna get married again because i never want to be under the foot of a man ever again in my life and so she runs away with like everything she holds dear to her and she gets on this long boat and sails away with other people the hero of the story ends up saving the heroine because that long boat ended up crashing and he takes her to his i don't know what it's called a clan a uh, tribe. I don't know the terminology. I forgot. Um, but he takes her to where he lives with all of his people. He's the chief of this area, obviously. And um, he has been told by the ruler of this land that he needs to marry her for some reason. You figure out why when you read the book. And the two of them don't like each other. He thinks that she is this stuck up snotty rich girl. And she thinks that he is this judgmental brute of a man. So this is very much an enemies to lovers romance. I really liked the Viking parts in here. It was very realistic. I feel like Lucy Morris did a lot of research for this and it paid off a lot. So if you want a good historical romance with Vikings in it, please pick this one up. Next, I actually have a Christmas related one. This was in my Christmas recommendation video. So if you want to read a Christmas historical, I have Charming the Runaway Duke by Maggie Dallin. This is actually a closed door romance, but not there's no door to be closed, if that makes sense. So like they don't even get in a situation where something would happen you know it's just a cute wholesome romance you know it's a sweet romance so this is about lady amelia and she has been betrothed to this guy the duke of harlow for a couple years but he is not in england he like travels around the world and he never comes home and he's she thinks that he's never going to fulfill his promise of marrying her and she's never met him before like society the ton claims that he is running away from amelia and that he's a runaway duke and so there's like some scandal around her and like no one really wants to be around her because she think because they think that the duke is running away from amelia for some reason um when in actuality the duke just doesn't know if he was ready for marriage or not so he hasn't been brave enough to go see amelia he thinks he's finally ready and so he goes to the house that she's staying in she's staying in her i believe her cousin's house with her aunt and he is pretending to be like a lowly servant um so that she doesn't judge him off the bat so he wants her to like like him for who he really is so he puts on this facade to pretend to not be the duke because he wants to see if she can love him for who she actually is and then he starts to realize that she's falling in love with the facade that he has put on and he is in trouble <laughs> He's like, oh no, I didn't mean for this to happen. I didn't mean for this to happen. Um, I gotta tell her that who I really am. And so it's very cute. It's fun at times. I didn't necessarily like the lying, but he realized the mistake that he made very quickly. <laughs> okay, next I'm gonna get into some series. Some of these you have heard before. Some of these are very popular, but this is my first historical romance recommendation video. So like sometimes I gotta get the staples out there, you know? First, we're gonna talk about the Wallflower series really fast. I only own two books from that series. So this is like the prequel you should read before the the Wallflower series is called Again the Magic. This one is a class difference romance, a enemies to lovers second chance romance as well. This one is so good. I love this one. Um, but yeah, you need to read this book before the rest of the series, before the main books. The main series, the Wallflower series, has four books in it. I only own book one on me, um, but I have read all of them and I adore this series. So this series is about four friends who are wallflowers. So they meet because during like balls and parties and soirees, they end up sitting at the wall with no man asking them to dance and they all have different reasons as to why no man will ask them to dance you know so this first book her name is um 
Annabelle. The reason why no one will ask her to dance or no one wants to marry her is because she is poor. Um, she doesn't have a lot of money and no man is wanting to marry a woman without money for them, you know? Um, and this is an enemies to lovers romance between her and it's also a class difference romance between her and the hero. Um, the second book, which is It Happened One Autumn, is a romance where the heroine is American and no one really wants to marry an American in British society. And it's a hate to love romance between her and this very well to do guy like he is very high in society and they don't like each other at all but they cannot fight their attraction to one another and then the third book in this series devil in winter about a heroine who is uh very well to do in society but no one wants to marry her because she's very 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 shy and sheltered by her family and she has a very f severe stutter and men make fun of her for it but she gets in a marriage of convenience romance with a villain from one of the different books because she needs to escape her abusive family and the last book in the series scandal in spring is the romance between an american woman who is the sister to one of the girls the other american woman i talked about she's the sister to her it's her romance between a childhood enemy enemy childhood enemy that she had um that also travels from america to england and he has been pining over her for years and she's just now realizing that this man is actually pretty attractive so i love this whole series you need to read it they are so stinking good and there's going to be another lisa claypas series on this list later on in the video the next series that i have to talk about is the sinclair brothers series by donna fletcher the first one being return of the rogue so there's four four books in this series i only have two of them i have book two and book three um, I, book three and book four are my favorites. Um, so book one is a um, arranged marriage and an age gap romance. I also forgot to mention that each book in the series is about one of the brothers in the Sinclair family falling in love. So um, this is about another brother and he falls in love with a witch, well, a, a woman who, who has been labeled as a witch. And in order to save her from dying, being put on the stake, he marries her. And then book three is uh, the angel and the Highlander. The hero in here is another brother, obviously. And he falls in love with a woman who is pretending to be a nun to escape the, uh, I think, arrangement her father has for her to get married. Uh, but then they end up getting married. <laughs> this, it, this one and book four, top spots for my favorite in the series. I think the next book, I think it's called The Highlander's Forbidden Bride. I love this one. Um, this one is about the brother that has been missing throughout the entire series, so you need to read these books in order, and his romance with his sworn enemy's daughter. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. These are Highlander romances. They're very entertaining. They're very fun. I adore them, okay? <laughs> then of course, I have one of my favorite historicals of all time. We have The Madness of Lordian Mackenzie. I just found this copy at Half Price Books. I own both copies now of like the different covers and I'm so happy I found this. <laughs> this is the first book in the Mackenzie's and McBride series. I have read uh, three books in the series. I'm not gonna talk about the rest of the books in the series because I haven't completed the series yet, but I have read up to book three. Um, but this one specifically is so good. Um, everyone who reads historical romances needs to read this book at some point in their life because it's so good. So this is about Ian and he overhears one of his colleagues um, talking about how he's going to propose to this widow, this woman, um, but he's actually like not gonna be faithful to her. And he's like, oh no, I have to go find this woman now and like tell her what's going on. And so he goes and finds her. And then right when he sees her, her name is Beth. He is completely enthralled by her. He's like, he tells her what happens. He tells her what this guy's gonna do to her and she's shocked. And he's like, that's okay though, because I, I wanna be with you. Can I, can I be with you? <laughs> I adore this one. Beth and Ian are one of my ultimate couples of all time, you know, ultimate OT, one of my ultimate OTPs. I just love Ian and I love Beth's relationship with Ian and how she cares for Ian. Ian has autism. He's been labeled as mad um, because nobody knows what autism is during this time period. He likes things in a very particular way and he communicates in a very particular way. And so um, Beth just adores him and Ian adores her and it is so spoony. I adore them. <laughs> Next I have another one of my favorite historical romances, if not my favorite one, Never Seduce a Scott by Maya Banks, y'all. <laughs> this one is so good. So this is actually the first book in a series. There's supposed to be three books in this series, but I think the third one is on hold for indefinitely. Um, but I have read the two books that are out. So I have read this one. And then the second book is Highlander Most Wanted. But let's talk about this one first. This is about Eveline and Graham. Eveline 
is uh, a part of this family who is rivals to Graham's family. So these clans are rivals with one another, but the king wants to stop this rivalry. So he forces Eveline and Graham to get married to one another because Eve Eveline is the daughter to the clan leader of one clan and then Graham is the clan leader to the other clan. So they have to get married. Graham is very worried about this because he doesn't want to put this woman in an uncomfortable situation. He doesn't want to use her in any way. So he's kind of disappointed because he, she has been labeled as like touched in the head because she acts very differently. Um, ever since a couple years ago, she fell off a horse and she has not acted the same since. Some people think like her brain is damaged. Um, she does not speak at all. No one actually knows that Evelyn is actually deaf and Graham through them being married learns this. She realizes through this, like her brain is injured. She's not a changed person. She just can't hear. And she's been judged for that. He swoons over her and would tear apart the world for her. He is amazing. I adore him and Evelyn is amazing and so brave and strong and I want to reread this book right now. <laughs> I think I might go download the audiobook right now because the more that I talk about it, the more that I just need to get sucked into this romance all over again because they are beautiful. This romance story is beautiful. It is amazing. If you want to go to historical, pick this one up. The second book is Highlander Most Wanted and I believe it's the brother to um, Graham and he falls for a woman who was also abused by the villain in this story. There's a lot of trigger warnings for that one, so please look them up, but this one was very difficult to read at times because it is very emotional. Um, I really enjoyed this one as well. Next, I have the Spindle Cove series by Tessa Dare. I only have these books in the series. I have two novellas here and then two main books. I think there's five books in the series and there are a few novellas, uh, either two or three. Okay, so this is the first book. It's called A Night to Surrender. Here is the very pretty step back here um so this series if you didn't know is about a town called spindle cove our heroine in here her and her father created this town to be a refuge for women in society who are different so there are women in here who want to either go on vacation for a little bit or have been outcasted by the ton it's basically just a refuge for women who don't belong in society really anymore and so this one is between our heroine who created the town with her father and a hero who's trying to form a, a militia a very broody damaged hero it's very it's a very reluctant romance between the two of them there's another novella that i've read which is once upon a winter's eve this is a christmasy novella and then there's also book two i love this one it's a week to be wicked this is a romance between one of the other like militia men one of the women who doesn't really fit in with society because she is kind of like a scientist. She collects and studies fossils and they go on a road trip adventure to this fossil um, convention together. <laughs> then we also have A Lady by Midnight, which is book three. And this one is between another militia man and um, a woman who is realizing that um, she belongs to this high society group of people. It's her journey to figuring out all that stuff because she was originally in Spindle Cove because she was destitute and had no money and she was just a piano teacher. But then someone comes and is like, hey, no, you're actually an heiress. And she has to figure out all of that. And the hero feels like he's not worthy because he's not a rich person. Then we have Beauty and the Blacksmith. I love this one. It's my favorite books in this series. Um, our heroine in here, her mother wants her to marry a very wealthy guy, um, but she falls for the town blacksmith instead. <laughs> then I have Any Duchess Will Do. Adore this one as well. Um, this is about a duke whose mother is forcing him to get married. Um, and so he picks out a barmaid from Spindle Cove that his mother will form into a duchess for him to marry, but he's actually not gonna marry her at the end. Like they have a deal um, to where she's gonna be the worst duchess of all time and he'll just send her home with some money afterward. Um, <laughs> and this one is super funny. It's one of the funniest ones in the entire series. And there's Lord Dashwood Missed Out. And this is a romance between a writer and the guy who inspired her writing and kind of jilted her when she was younger. And then lastly in the series, we have Do You Want to Start a Scandal by Tessa Dare. Oh, I love this one. There's a step back for this one too. Let me open it for you. This one is between um, our heroine who doesn't really want to get married, but uh, she gets in a compromising position with our hero during a party and she might have to get married to him. <laughs> so I love these books so much. I love this series. Some people say it's Tessa Dare's like least favorite series to them, but I don't know about what y'all talk about because this series is so much stinking fun. Next, I have The Highwaymen by Kerrigan Byrne. This is the romance between Farah and Dorian. Farah, when she was younger, she like pretended to marry, but in actually like hand fasted because this is in Scotland, married um, her like best friend. I think they were in an orphanage together, but um, something happens to where 
she gets assaulted by this old gross man and the little boy hero goes to defend her and he gets put in jail because of it and he's been put in jail for forever and Farah has always considered herself married to this boy and it's years later she's now a grown woman she learns that this guy is now dead like he died in jail um and then dorian is a notorious evil dude in society like a criminal kind of and he takes her from where she's living right now and takes her to his castle and is like i promise to keep you safe i lived with or was in the same cell with the your husband your childhood husband they may or may not end up developing feelings for one another throughout all of this this one is super fun it's a very big staple in the romance community and i definitely need to read more carrick and burn because this is the only book that i've read by her um so i'm so excited to check more out from her i do have a few on my shelf down there by her that i need to check out this one is super super fun to read and it's very deep and emotional at points so just be aware and lastly we're gonna talk about probably my favorite historical romance series um and that is the <laughs> Ravenel's, ooh, the Ravenel series by uh, Lisa Kleypas. <laughs> I adore this series. There goes a book. <laughs> Anyways, I adore this series so stinking much. Um, there are so far six main books in the series and there's also Devil in Disguise, which I haven't read yet, but it's kind of like a book that is a part of both the Ravenels and the Wallflower series. So yeah, oh my gosh, I'm dropping them. Give me a minute. <laughs> this series focuses on one family, the Ravenel family, who you meet in book one, Cole Hardrake. And here is the step back to this one. I adore her dress. I love her dress. Um, but this one is actually probably one of my least favorite in the series, um, just because I didn't enjoy the couple as much as some of the other ones in here, but I feel like it sets up the series and the family really well. So you do need to read these books in order, even if people do claim the first one isn't necessarily the best one. Anyway, this is about our heroine who is a widow and her husband dies and there's no male heir in their immediate family to take over the estate and the money. And so a long lost cousin comes and she ends up falling for that cousin. Then book two is Marrying Winterborn. Here is the step back for that one. You do read about this couple and the beginning of their relationship in book one. So again, I recommend reading these in order. <laughs> but yeah, this is about um, our heroine named Helen and she is the sister in here. She's in the Ravenel family and she ends up falling for Reese Winterborn, who is a very wealthy man society, but he's also a self-made man. So people judge him a lot and he owns this giant department store and he is just so swoony. I love him. In book three, my favorite one in the series is A uh, Devil in Spring. Here's a step back for that one. I adore this one so stinking much. This is about Pandora and Gabriel. Remember how I talked about the Wallflower series a little bit ago? So Gabriel is actually the son to one of the couples from the Wallflower series. So I recommend reading the Wallflower series before this one. Lady Pandora, she doesn't want to get married. She just wants to make board games and make her own board game company. But um, she ends up getting in a compromising position with Gabriel at this party. Like she drops something and her hand gets stuck in like a settee, you know, like in a chair. And Gabriel like walks past the room and sees her stuck and it's like, oh, okay I'll go help her and he gets stuck too and these men come by and are like oh, what are y'all doing and um Gabriel's like oh no you're ruined like my duty now is to marry you and she's like no flipping way am I marrying you I don't care if I'm ruined I'm not doing that and Gabriel's trying to convince her to marry him because he's trying to do the right thing and he just becomes this sweet caring man towards her Pandora also has a disability they had a very abusive father he beat her so bad one time and um her she is deaf in one ear and so she often experiences vertigo and is very clumsy because her balance is off centered and um, people make fun of her because of her a book just fell. <laughs> People make fun of her because of her clumsiness when in actuality she just has a disability that nobody knows about and G and Gabriel is so sweet to her about it and so accommodating and will listen to her all day long about it. Next is book four which is Hello Stranger. Here's a step back for that one. This one actually is not my favorite in the series. This one or book one might be my least favorite. I just didn't care for this one that much. Um, <laughs> This one is about one of the Ravenel's family members and him falling in love with a woman doctor which was very cool. Their romance just didn't really float my boat as much as the other ones but again you should probably read these books in order so <laughs> book five is a uh, devil's daughter and this is the step back for this one this one is a single mom romance she is a widow and she falls for one of the men in the ravenel family this one is so sweet i love our heroine but she is very reluctant to like the hero at first because apparently the hero knew her husband her now dead husband unfortunately when they were children they went to the same boarding school and he bullied him and she, right when she sees him she's like 
you're the guy who bullied my husband. Like she doesn't tell him that, but she's, she's holding up this grudge against him. And he's like, why does this woman hate me? What is going on? What did I do to her? And he doesn't remember this boy that he tortured when he was in boarding school when he was a child. <laughs> this is very funny, but it's also so stinking good. And lastly, we have Chasing Cassandra by Lisa Kleypas, obviously. And here's this step back for this one. This one is maybe my second favorite in the series. This is so good. This is about Cassandra, who is the twin sister to Pandora that I talked about earlier. And she is the last person in the family who's not married yet. And she just wants to get married so badly. So she goes up to her cousin. And I think it's the cousin from this book. So this, the beginning of this book kind of like takes place before this one. Um, but then it like goes deeper later on. And so she's talking to her cousin and it's like, hey, I know we don't love each other, but like, I really want a husband. I want a family. Do you think like maybe we could get married and just like see how it goes because I want a family. That's, that's my dream in life. And he's like, no, like you should have someone who loves you for you. You should fall in love, blah, blah, blah. Tom Severin is overhearing this conversation that she's having with her cousin. Um, Cause I think it's like private in a private room. And Tom is like in the corner sitting there and he like sees Cassandra. And the moment that he sees her, he's like enthralled by her and her beauty. And he's like, he stands up and he's like, I'll marry you. I'll do it. I want to marry you. <laughs> And it is so cute and sweet, but Tom is also very stoic. I believe it's not like explicitly stated because this is a historical romance book and they don't know the terminology during this time. It is believed that he is also possibly autistic um, because he does not deal with his emotions well and he claims he only has three emotions. He is not able to love. So he tells Cassandra right off the bat, I'm not able to love you, but I do think you're beautiful and I want you to be mine. And so Cassandra and Tom get into a relationship together and possibly get married. And Tom maybe even realizes, oh, um, I maybe can love somebody. <laughs> so yeah, I love this series so sticking much. Please read that. <laughs> so there you have it. Those are some historical romance recommendations for you. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. Um, and if you have made it this far into the video, leave me a woman in a, the woman in the dress emoji, like the dancing emoji or any woman in a dress emoji because a lot of these women have beautiful dresses. So anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.